The best championship footballer for every single country. Let's go. So guys, welcome back to the channel. We've got a big one coming at you today. I'm going to be going through every single country on planet Earth and giving you who I believe to be the best championship footballer from that region. As always, I'd love to get your guys' input in the comments down below. And before we do hop into anything, your guys' support would be massively appreciated. As I'm sure you can imagine, a lot goes into a video like this. So if you're not already, make sure to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We're pushing our way towards 30,000 subscribers. And as well as that, please do leave a like if you do go on to enjoy. But without any further ado, let's Let's jump into this one. Starting out with Albania, we're going for Birmingham defender Geraldo Bajrami. Still a developing player from his time so far at Blues, but they obviously have quite high hopes for him. He's represented Albania at under 21's level. And next up for Angola, we're sticking with Birmingham and going for Jeremy Bella. A wonderfully skilled player, can take defenders on either foot. He's a fullback's nightmare. So far in his Blues career, he averages an assist every three starts for Birmingham, so clearly a very talented player. For Antigua, we're going for Marlon Romeo. One one of, for me, the best fullbacks in the league, actually. He was part of a rock solid Millwall defence last season, which kept 16 clean sheets in the Championship. Has adapted really well to life, playing as a right wing back as well. Both brilliant at going forward and doing the defensive work. With Argentina, of course, it had to be Norwich City's Emi Buendia. I would say the most technically gifted player in the Championship. I think we're all thankful to have him here for another season. Already this far into the season, he's got six goal contributions for Norwich. He averages 3.5 key passes per 90, which is more than anyone else in the league so far. Australia we're going for Sheffield Wednesday's Massimo Luongo. Now I had a bit of choice with this one but Luongo I am a big fan of. He averages 3 tackles per 90 which is the second best tackle rate in the league. He's a tenacious midfielder who adds a bit of bite to that Wednesday midfield and without him they're unquestionably weaker. Austria we're going for Bristol City forward Andy Weiman. Probably one of the most underrated forwards in the league actually. He's non-stop with his work rate. Can play in a variety of positions across Across the front line he's actually been playing more in midfield this season for Bristol City but over his last three seasons he's got 42 goal contributions in the championship those sorts of numbers aren't to be sniffed at with Belgium we're going for Blackburn Rovers goalkeeper Thomas Kaminski he's had a massive impact on this Rovers defense so far this season and a clear upgrade on what they had there last season and a short shot stopper he's gonna be absolutely crucial to if Blackburn do something this season Bermuda we're going for Bristol City striker Naki Wells a brilliant player with a low centre of gravity, plays really well off the last shoulder of defenders and he scores goals at this level, several times we've seen him getting into double figures and right now for Bristol City he's one of their real key men going forward. Bosnia we're going for Bournemouth goalkeeper Azmir Begovic, now I think a lot of people, myself included, thought Begovic was done at Bournemouth but this season has been the resurgence in his English career. For me, been one of the best goalkeepers in the league so far this season in terms of a presence in net and shot stopping undoubtedly one of the best in the league. Brazil we're going for 19 year old Jao Pedro of Watford. The Brazilian striker has a whole bunch of potential about him already this season. Has got five goals to his name including that absolute worldie he scored against Derby. I think in terms of his movement and technical ability he's definitely one of the best in the championship. Cameroon we're going for Gaetan Bong. He's not played all too much football for Forest so far this season but does have a promotion under his belt at this level with Brighton back in 2017. For Canada we're going for Cardiff winger Junior Hoylet. Still has it in him even at his age to come up with real moments of quality he has two promotions at this level under his belt, both with Cardiff and QPR, where he played key roles in those seasons. Chile, we're going for Watford defender Francisco Seralto. We've not seen all too much of him so far this season. He was one of those players who arrived from Udinese in Italy in the summer. Colombia, we're then going for Jefferson Lerma of Bournemouth, who's just an absolute Rolls Royce of a midfielder at this level, isn't he? He absolutely dominant. He's very much the complete midfielder, both from an attacking and defensive aspect. He keeps them ticking along and just makes things look so easy at this level. For Comoros, we're going for Fra Bashiru of Nottingham Forest, another player who we've not seen all too much of so far this season. He, the midfielder arrived from Malmo in the summer and like I say, as of right now, we've not really seen all too much of him, but I didn't have much choice for this one. For Congo, we are sticking with Nottingham Forest though and we are going to goalkeeper Bryce Samba. 
there. He had an absolutely terrific time with Forrest last season and instantly improved their back line. In terms of reflexes and shot stopping, he's undoubtedly one of the best in the league. Croatia, we're then going for Birmingham's new signing, Alan Halilovic. Now, I'm very interested to see what he can do this season for Birmingham. I had a couple of choices for Croatia. Obviously, I could have gone for Ivan Sundic of Birmingham as well, but Halilovic just excites me. The creative midfielder who's previously played for the likes of AC Milan and Barcelona, only still 24 years old as well. This could be, if Birmingham managed to get the best out of him, a very exciting season. Cuba, we are then going for Onel Hernandez, a fullback's absolute nightmare. During Norwich's promotion season a couple of years ago, he would absolutely melt people running past them. In that promotion season with Norwich, he got 17 goal contributions, undoubtedly one of the fastest players at this level. It's been a shame that he's been out for the majority of the season so far, but once he does get back up and running, I'm sure he's going to show his class again. For Curacao, I had the choice of the Bakuna brothers. I've gone for Junio Bakuna of Huddersfield. He tends to be a little bit of a hot and cold player, can sort of flow in and out of form, but last season he came up with some absolute thunderbolts of finishes, didn't he? Cyprus, we're going for Nicholas Ionu of Nottingham Forest. He had some really promising performances up until that Luton game where he got sent off, but represented Cyprus at under-21 level, and I think their national team as well. Czech Republic, we're going for Bristol City defender Thomas Callas, one of the most assured defenders at this level. You know what you're getting from Callas. Been a shame that he struggled at times with injuries, but undoubtedly Bristol City are a much stronger side when he's in their back line. Really good organiser and reader of the game. For Denmark, we are going for Brentford midfielder Christian Norgard. Now, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you'll know just how highly I actually rate Norgard. Brilliant at what he does for this Brentford side. Sometimes actually goes under the radar a little bit. Has represented Denmark at national level. And I actually think that the signing of Norgard last summer was probably one of the best bits of business that Brentford have done in the last few years. The Congo, we're going for a championship favourite, Brit Asombolonga. Now, Asombolonga is a really funny player to put your finger on because he does have these real hot and cold spells throughout his career, but in his last four seasons at this level, he's always hit double figures in the championship. For Asombolonga, it's just about staying fit for a sustained amount of time. Egypt, we're going for Sam Morsi, a battling midfielder who was crucial to Wigan's promotions in recent years, now playing his football for Middlesbrough. Now, England was a tough one. I want to get your guys' thoughts on this in the comments down below. I think that if we're basing it on current form, and we probably have to because there's so many different players I could have gone for, He's probably got to be Adam Armstrong at the moment from Blackburn Rovers, isn't he? He currently sits as the league's top scorer. 13 goals already for him so far this season. And considering that we're only a fraction of the way through this year, how many goals do you realistically see Armstrong scoring this season? And do you think that Ivan Tony's going to outscore him? Let me know in the comments down below who do you think comes out on top between those two. For Finland, though, we're going for one of the most potent strikers at this level, and that is, of course, Timu Puki. He just scores goals for fun. At this level for Norwich City in 54 stars, starts he scored 36 goals for them which is an absolutely unbelievable strike rate. With France we're then going for Watford's Etienne Capou. He is very much a Premier League player playing in the championship. It's a little bit like a year 11 playing with year 7s. He just makes things look absolutely effortless. A player with real pedigree about him dictates to play when he is on the pitch for Watford. With Germany I'm going to go for Blackburn Rovers Lewis Holtby. I think that sometimes goes under the radar a little bit so far this season. We've given a lot of praise and rightly so to Blackburn's forward three but Lewis Holtby is very much the general which keeps them ticking along in midfield you can see he's a player who's got real pedigree about him and he's been an absolutely wonderful addition into this Blackburn side and just keeps them ticking along. Garner we're going for Swansea's Andre AU another player who's got real pedigree at this level I think he walks into the vast majority of other championship sides I think that Swansea are really fortunate to have him and it's a bit of a cliche but he is one of those players who's capable of coming up with these game winning moments and can absolutely carry Swansea on his back sometimes and just win matches by himself with Greece, we're going for Blackburn goalkeeper Anthony Stegerkis. He arrived in the summer as pretty much a backup goalkeeper for them. Granada, we're going for Shannon Baptiste of Brentford. He's another midfielder who they're hoping to be able to scope into something quite special. He arrived in January from Oxford. Guinea-Bissau, that's going to be Alpha Semedo. We saw him last season in the Championship with Nottingham Forest where he started out really well but sort of just fell off as the season went on. This time round back with Reading, he seems to be a bit more of a complete midfielder and has put in a string of really consistent performances for them so far. Hungary's going to be Bristol City midfielder Adam Nagy. Now, we didn't get to see all too 
much of him last season due to injury, so we're only really now starting to see what he's capable of doing. But when he does get a consistent run of games in the team, you can see he's a very technically gifted midfielder who we all think there's a lot more to come from. Addison's going to be John Daddy Bud Varta, not the prettiest footballer on the eye, but he's effective at this level. I think you have to give him credit for. We've seen him with multiple championship clubs, the likes of Wolves, Reading, and now Millwall. Iran's going to be Sam Angaros of Brentford. It was never going to be an easy job trying to fill the boots that were left by side Ben Rahm, but so far this season we've seen a couple of flashes from Golos, but the season's still quite early days and there's more time for him to go on and improve. Italy's going to be Watford defender Adam Messina. Now we've not actually seen him yet in the championship so far because he has been out due to injury. He's expected to be back sometime around the new year. Ivory Coast is going to be Yaku Meite, a striker who usually sorts of flies under the radar a little bit, but a really effective output from him over the last couple of seasons with Reading where he's got into double figures both times. Jamaica's going to be Preston North End's Daniel Johnson when DJ is in the mood to play. He's one of the best technically gifted footballers that we've seen at North End over the last couple of years. Last year especially when he got 12 goals and 7 assists was our real key man. With Kenya it's got to be Barnsley's Clark Adore. His goal on the last day of last season kept Barnsley up in the championship scoring in the 91st minute against Brentford. With Motley we're going for Nottingham Forest, Sam Bissau. All Forest fans know what Sal's capable of. It's just he's not really been able to stay fit on a regular basis but last season especially in some of the big games he was absolutely brilliant in that defensive midfield role. Martinique we got Coventry City's Wesley Jobolo. Now after 14 months out injured he made his first appearance back for Coventry at the weekend against Norwich City so obviously he'll be looking to now get back up and going for the season. Morocco we're going for QPR playmaker Elias Che. He's not had the easiest of jobs this season trying to fill the boots that were left by Eberieze but I think he's done a decent job. Four goals already for the playmaker. Likes to make things happen going forward. With Montserrat it's got to be Lyle Taylor. Probably the coolest penalty taker in the league. The way he just struts and strides up to it and then puts it in the bottom corner. But so far for Forrest he's got four goals this season. Last season for Charlton got 11. Namibia we are going for Blackburn Rovers fullback Ryan Niambi. A player who seemingly has been around for quite some time now but only 22 years old. Only going to go on and get better. One of the best prospects we've got at fullback in the championship at the moment. Netherlands has to be on and Juma, one of the most exciting players to watch in the league. He's got five goals to his name already this season. He's a fullback's nightmare and come the end of the season I wouldn't be at all surprised to see him being in the team of the season. Nigeria was a bit of a 50-50 but I have gone for QPR's bright Asai Samuel. So far this season he averages 3.1 dribbles per 90 which is more than anyone else in the championship. Since the departure of the Berrieze, Asai Samuel is very much QPR's main man now. Obviously an honourable mention goes to Genevieve McKell as well. Northern Ireland had a bit of choice but realistically I had to go for Paddy McNair this season he's currently having with Middlesbrough. Neil Warnock is getting the best out of him whether he's playing as a central defender or as a midfielder he's got all these attributes rolled into one. Norway we're going for Josh King although we've not really seen it in the championship from him so far this season his opportunities have been fairly limited. His goal scoring record for Bournemouth speaks for itself in 178 appearances he's got 50 goals for them. Philippines we're going for Neil Etheridge I think a superb addition to this Birmingham back line over the summer the goalkeeper came in from Cardiff where he did really well over the past few years. And with Poland we're going for another goalkeeper this time going for Millwall's Bartosz Bielkowski. Over the last five or so years been one of the most consistent goalkeepers in the championship. Last season got the most most amount of clean sheets. 16 last season with Millwall. He'll be looking to top that this season with them. Now Portugal was an interesting one but I have gone for Reading's Lucas Chow. What a wonderful player he's been so far this season. I think we've always wondered what would Lucas Chow be like over a full season if he stayed injury free. We're seeing that this season and already with nine goals and four assists he's been the main man for Reading going forward. Republic of Ireland I've gone for Preston North End's Alan Brown Mr Versatile when it comes to the championship whether he's playing as a pressing number 10, a holding midfielder, a more defensive midfielder or as a right back he'll play absolutely anywhere you need him and he always does a fine job wherever he plays probably his best position as that number 10 a couple of seasons ago got 12 goals in that role but like I say the guy plays absolutely everywhere. Romania we're then going to go for Reading's George Puskas now he had a bit of a hot and cold season last time round but considering it was his first proper season in England. The fact that he got 12 goals isn't all too bad of a return. Scotland we are going for Sheffield Wednesday playmaker Barry Bannon. Now a brilliantly gifted technical midfielder who can dictate the tempo of play and like a fine wine he's only going and getting better with age. He's got an absolute wonder of a left foot. Brilliant set piece taker. I think all the Wednesday fans are glad to have him. Senegal it had to be Ishmael Assar. We saw over the summer him being linked to the biggest clubs in and around England and so far this season in the championship we've seen real glimpses 
of moments of quality. Already this season with five goal contributions, he's got lightning pace about him. With Serbia, we're going for Reading youngster Dejan Tatek. The 18-year-old got called up to Serbia's under-19s the other week. Another player who's come through the Reading youth ranks there. Sierra Leone, we're going for QPR fullback Osman Kaki. He's an example of the QPR Academy. Continuing to develop his game, I know that a lot of QPR fans have high hopes. Slovakia, we're going for Coventry goalkeeper Marco Morosi. Now, despite the amount of goals that Coventry have conceded in the championship so far this season, Morosi's actually had a decent season and has kept Coventry in a fair few matches so far this season, pulling up a fair few amount of saves. Now, in Spain, there was a lot of competition. In the end, I've just edged Mikel San Jose. I think the pedigree that he's introduced to this Birmingham midfield, he's had several really good performances so far this season. Deep Delaware, especially where he got the assist for the winner, thought he was really good in that game. Got a brilliant passing range on him and reads the game off the ball very well. Sweden, I've gone for Brentford defender Pontus Janssen. I think that his introduction into that Brentford line last season was actually quite underrated. He took a Brentford defence which was really leaky this season before and completely transformed them. Real vocal point for them at the back. He deservedly, I think, gets into this list. Switzerland didn't have much choice, but I have gone for Josip Dermic. Now, he has sort of been frozen out of Norwich so far this season. Norwich fans fill me in on the situation down below. He's not featured in the championship this far into the year. In the Premier League, had a bit of a tough time there, just popping up with the one goal for them. Turkey, we've gone for Derby's Colin Kazem Richards. Now, at the time of this signing, it did seem like a bit of a joke arrival, really. He's mostly been used as a substitute so far, but to be fair to him, the game he did start at the weekend against Wickham got an assist and actually was a bit of a handful. Uganda, we've got Wickham forward Uchik Pizu. We've not seen all too much of him so far this season. The vast majority, actually all of his performances, have come as a substitute. USA, there was quite a bit of competition, but I have gone for Derby County's Dwayne Holmes. He did score at the weekend against Wickham, his first goal of the season. And we've not seen all too much of him this far into the year. Most of his appearances have come off the bench so far, but last season, he went through a real spell of being really informed for Derby. Good little technical player when he's on the ball. Perhaps if he gets a consistent run on the Derby side this season, we'll see those levels of performances again. Now, Wales is what I want to know your guys' thoughts on in the comments down below. It was a 50-50 choice for me. In the end, I've just gone for David Brooks. I was going, you know, to and fro between Brooks and Harry Wilson. Who would you guys rather have in your team? Let me know down below. So far this season, though, I've just edged David Brooks as he does have one more goal contribution than Harry Wilson. They're both quite similar players. Both play on that right-hand side, like to cut in and side onto their left foot. Both 23 years old, obviously both Welsh. Brooks so far, though, has been part of one of the most fluid attacking lines that we've seen in the championship. You know, Dan Jorma, Solanke and Brooks are absolutely terrific together. And then to round off today's list, we have Zimbabwe where we will be going for QPR forward Macaulay Bond. He's already come up with two real moments of quality for QPR so far this season with late goals against both Derby and Sheffield Wednesday. He's a bit of a diamond in the rough sort of striker. He's still a bit rough around the edges, but there is real potential with Macaulay Bond. Last season for Charlton, got 11 goals for them. He's mostly been used as an impact sub so far this season, but like I say, I still think there's more to come from him. So guys, there we have it. There was my complete list going around every country in the world and who I believe to be the best championship footballer from all of them. So as always, do get your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you agree or disagree with some of my selections here? I'm sure it's going to get a lot of you guys talking in the comments down below. But apart from that, thanks so much for watching guys. So if you did go on to enjoy, please do leave a like. It would be massively appreciated, especially on a video like this, which takes so much going into it. And please do subscribe for a bit of regular championship content if you are near around here. Like I say, we're pushing our way to 30k. But apart from that, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you all in the next one.